Hello friends, today I am going to discuss about methodology of thin layer chromatography. In methodology of thin layer chromatography, first uh, I am going to discuss about details of chromoplates. What are chromoplates? Chromoplates are supporting material for adsorbent or stationary phase in TLC. It is made up of either glass or aluminium plates are used. Ideal size for a chrome plate will be 20 into 20 centimeter, 20 into 10 centimeter, 20 into 5 centimeter, 10 into 10 centimeter, meter, etc. As I have already discussed in uh, introduction part of TLC video. Thickness of the TLC plate or adsorbent or stationary phase will be 250 micrometer. When we are using preparative TLC plate, then thickness of the stationary phase will be 500 to 2000 micron. If we are using preparative TLC method, then thickness of adsorbent in preparative TLC will be 500 to 2000 micron or 0.5 to 2 millimeter, both are same. Now, what is preparative TLC and what is TLC? How both are different? If there is a plate present like this, it is TLC. In preparative TLC also same plate will be there. Okay, but thickness of stationary phase in TLC, it will be 250 micron but here thickness of stationary phase or adsorbent will be greater it will be 500 to 2000 micron it means 0.5 to 2 millimeter okay but in TLC if we are putting the spot of or sample like this then it will develop and it will be separated out like this it will give two spots because two compounds are present in our sample first one is uh, red one and the second one is green one so it will give two spots but in preparative TLC uh, we are putting our sample as a band as a large band and as compared to spots so our sample will be like this in preparative TLC we will put our sample like this in the form of band from start to end okay and it will be separated like this it will be separated in the form of complete band so what is difference between TLC and preparative TLC TLC is mainly used for qualitative or quantitative analysis but preparative TLC is mainly used for isolation of the compound if two or three or many compounds are present in any mixture and if we want to isolate that compound or a single compound from that mixture then we can use preparative TLC method because it is time saving method it will take very less time as compared to column chromatography because column chromatography is time consuming method but uh, drawback of pre preparative TLC method is that by using this method, we will get less amount of isolated compound, but separation will be fast. So, if we want to separate this red color compound from TLC, uh, from preparative TLC, then we will scrape out this band 
this band will be scraped out and it will be uh, taken in a beaker okay it will be taken in a beaker so in this beaker our red color compound will be there our red color compound will be there along with this red color compound stationary phase from tlc will be there stationary phase will also be there means if we are using silica gel then silica gel will be there then we will put we will put solvent we will put appropriate solvent and this solvent should be able to dissolve this red color compound compound a for example compound a this one is silica gel g okay then we are putting solvent here after uh, putting solvent this solvent will dissolve our compound a and the silica gel will not be dissolved in this solvent so what happens in next step in next step we will filter uh, all this uh, suspension then after filtration we will get our solvent with our compound here our compound will be there and solvent will be there and after evaporation after evaporation of the solvent we will get the pure compound evaporation we will get red color compound this compound a in isolated form so this is the purpose of preparative tlc as uh, in tlc it is for qualitative or quantitative analysis only but by using preparative tlc we can isolate our compound now coming to the next part which is stationary phase uh, which will be used in tlc stationary phase so in tlc we are using mainly silica gel g as a stationary phase silica gel g as a stationary phase and the other stationary phase is also available as i have already discussed about stationary phase in my previous video of tlc you can watch that video for details about stationary phase here um, i am not going to much details about stationary phase so uh, i am giving some details about silica gel only so silica gel is mainly used as a stationary phase in tlc and it is uh, silica gel g means it is sio2 plus SiO2 plus calcium sulfate CaSO4. Calcium sulfate means it is gypsum. Apart from this, we are using silica gel GF254 as a stationary phase in TLC. So in this silica gel, silica gel means here SiO2 will be there. SiO2 plus silica gel g means gypsum gypsum will be there means caso4 that is calcium sulfate plus f f means fluorescent material will be there and a fluorescent material is zinc silicate which is used as a fluorescent material in uh, silica gel it will give green fluorescence under uv light So this is the formula for silica gel, this is for gypsum, this is for zinc silicate, ZN4, Si2, O7, OS, hold twice. So silica gel will give green color fluorescence at 254 nanometer. So our hole by ground, our whole stationary phase will give fluorescent. At fluorescent by ground, then it, that spot will be easily identified. Okay. So this is the purpose for silica gel G. So this is the is commonly used stationary phase in TLC. Now coming to the preparation of the plate. TLC plate is prepared by using four method, which is pouring, dipping, spraying, and spreading.
So coming to the first method which is pouring. In pouring first we have to make a slurry and the viscosity of slurry should be optimum. It should not be much diluted or it should not be much thick. So in slurry method first we will take our plate like this and then we will pour our slurry into the plate in the top of the top of the plate uh, like this uh, after pouring we have to tilt our plate and uh, it should be spread uniformly then we will keep for air drying okay now we are coming to the second method which which is dipping what happens in dipping in dipping we are taking two plates simultaneously if we want to put our stationary face at the upside of these plates then we will put our plate like this okay and this plate will be dipped in the slurry like this okay and after that after dipping we will remove our uh, plates and uh, we will detach our plates like this so both the side both the upper side our stationary face will be there and from the bottom this side no stationary face will be there and we will keep our uh, chromo plates for drying now coming to the next one which is spraying in spraying method sprayer will be there and by sprayer uh, we can spray our stationary face directly into the plate but uh, this spraying method is uh, commercially not useful because uniformity is, uh, is very less in spraying method and the last one is spreading method in spreading method uh, there will be two types of spreading method is uh, there first one is moving plate second one is moving spreader now coming to the first method which is moving plate method in moving plate method one spreader will be there this spreader is filled with slurry of stationary face this slurry will come from uh, upside to the plate plate will below the spreader and this plate will move like this now coming to the second method which is moving spreader in moving spreader spreader will be filled from, uh, by slurry of stationary face and then plate will be static or uh, it will be stagnant and the spreader will be move like this okay and the spreading takes place and uh, it will produce most uniform um, stationary face or most uniform chromo plates in TLC so this is preparation of TLC next step of TLC is air drying and activation of the plate So after preparation of plate or plate is left for air drying after air drying it is uh, activated in hot air oven at uh, 105 degrees celsius for 30 minutes to remove any moisture content present in our TLC plate. If we are ma making our plate by using non-polar solvents or volatile solvents then this activation is not required. Now coming to the next step which is development of solvent system and uh, I have already discussed the development of solvent system in uh, my previous video which is episode 3. Now next step is application of the sample. first we should try to prepare our sample in volatile solvent in the place of non-volatile solvent if we are using non-volatile solvent then a spot of our sample may be spread and uh, which will not give proper result or which will not give proper RF value. Next part is development chamber. Rectangular development chamber is uh, used for uh, TLC plate development and that rectangular chamber is made up of glass and we have to keep our TLC plate vertically like this and vertically and tilted like this okay
Now coming to the next step which is uh, development of chromatograms. So development of chromatograms can be done by various method for example uh, it can be done by ascending method it can be done by descending method it can be uh, done by multi step development it can be done by two dimensional development it is also known as 2d development and it can be done by gradient illusion so in ascending development our uh, we will put our plate like this and here at the bottom solvent will be there and solvent will run from bottom to the uh, upside against gravitational force due to capillary action in descending uh, plate will be like this and the solvent will run from top to the bottom because in the top of the plate there will be a wick uh, which is connected with uh, solvent system and uh, from uh, that uh, wick solvent, is, solvent will come and, and it will run from top to the bottom. Now coming to the third one which is multi-step development. In multi-step development generally we are using more than uh, two solvent system. For example if we are having any compound which is uh, not easily separable. So first we will put our uh, TLC plate in a set solvent system then we will develop for a certain centimeter or a certain uh, time then after that we will remove that plate then we will dry that plate and again we will put uh, that plate in different solvent system with either higher polarity or uh, less polarity then separation takes place in multi-step development. Now coming to the next one which is, which is two dimensional development. In two dimensional development first we have to put our spots like this then this will this spot will develop for example if we are getting uh, two compounds like this it is looking two compounds then again we will uh, try the plate like this and uh, in the bottom part our solvent will be there if uh, in this spot if two compounds are there then again it will run and uh, it will give uh, two compounds if here only one compound is there then here it will give only one compound so this is two dimensional development first is like this first dimension then second one is second dimension that is why it is known as two dimension now coming to the next one which is gradient illusion in gradient illusion during development of TLC plate we can change the composition of our solvent system so this is the overview about methodology of TLC system. First one is chromo plates. Second one is stationary phase. Third one is preparation of plates. Fourth one is air drawing and activation of plate. Fifth one is uh, development of solvent systems. Sixth one is application of the sample. Seventh one is uh, development chamber. And uh, eighth one is development of chromatograms. After development of chromatograms, we have to visualize our spots by using uh, various methods and, and after visualizing our spots, we have to uh, evaluate our chromoplates. It may be uh, qualitative analysis or it may be quantitative analysis. In next video, I am going to discuss about various visualizing agents which can be used in thin layer chromatography. Thank you.